How's it going guys? Today we're going to get started building the uh, MP10 TKI2 and the first step in your instructions are your differentials. So that's where we're going to start. I'm going to show you guys how I build my differentials. Okay y'all, for the sake of you know, shorting the length of the video. I'm just going to show you all one differential. I already have these over here ready to go. I'm just letting them sit um, to let the air bubbles come out. And you can really get extremely OCD with your differential building. Um, I've done it just throwing them together and, you know, actually going like really crazy and cleaning everything and sanding everything, make sure everything's smooth. Um, I don't think you're really going to notice a difference. Um, but for the sake of the video, I always take a little bit of sandpaper and a, a piece of glass. Um, this is sitting on glass over here, just so you have a smooth surface. And these gears, when they're cast, they'll have like these little rough edges. You can kind of fill it around the side. Um, so I'll just take a sandpaper and a little bit of WD-40 and just kind of hold it down. And you can kind of hear how how kind of grippy and snaggy that is. And you'll kind of hear it when it goes smooth and that's pretty much when I'll stop. And it's more of a feel thing as well. You'll feel it actually kind of go flat. And I'll wipe it off real quick. And like I said, I really don't go crazy doing stuff like this, but this is just something I, I do like to do because um, they, they have like some pretty, they can have some pretty rough edges on them. But I've already done the rest of these. Like I said, for speediness, I'm just trying to show you guys. But you can kind of feel it has a much smoother finish to it now, of course. Um, you can even do the plastic casings theirself. Um, you kind of see they're kind of rough. Um, I don't really get into that. That's what the gasket's for, I think. Um, so I don't go crazy with that. Before you start putting a lot of grease in here, I always just clean, wipe the inside of this with like some degreaser or something and take some kind of like a, a gasket maker or sealant. And just run it on the inside. And I do this mainly just to hold the gasket in place. And you can also see there's like a smooth and kind of a more coarse. I always put the coarse side towards the uh, metal gear itself. Try to line it up the best you can. Take a driver. Don't go crazy and scratch your gasket or anything, but just kind of push it down in place. Make sure it stays lined up. All right. Once you get that done, take a little bit of grease on your finger. Pick up your O-rings. Just kind of make sure you get them nice and covered. Go ahead and plop it into your gear. Grab your case, do the same thing, just a little bit more difficult because it's down in there. <laughs> All right. So once you get it down in there, I always want to put just, I always put just a little bit on the inside where the bearing will go. Grab your bearing. Side on there. Got a bit much. All right. So then you want to grab your out drive. And I try to put a lot of grease because um, you can always clean up excess, but it's 
it's, you have to take it apart to add it, so I don't mind getting a little carried away. And just make sure you get some down in that grease groove. Grab a little bit more. Like I said, I can put a big dab like that on the end of it. Might be a bit excessive, but... And what I will do is I'll hold my finger on the O-ring and force the out drive in there. And that little bit of grease I put on the end will smush out and make it will, you're pretty much gonna get grease all through here. And I'll just clean up the excess. As you can see, just line it up like that. And keep your finger, make a nice seal and you'll feel the pressure and you'll feel the grease smush out. And there you go. And you can take a Q-tip and flatten it out and clean the inside of that. And you kind of see we got grease squishing out everywhere, which is good. Then you pick up one of your pins. Throw a little bit of grease on it. Then just check to make sure it's spinning freely and set it off to the side. Let's see. And just repeat the process with the other out drive. Make sure you get grease down in the grease groove. Put your good little dab on the outside right there. Bam. Once again, just hold my finger on the inside, which is kind of hard on the inside, but just kind of try to make a seal with your finger if you can. And you, you can kind of hear it pushing the air and stuff like that, so. This definitely ensures you're getting grease through everything. Grab your other pin. Just put a little bit of grease, just run it around in your fingers. Get a little grease on it. And go ahead. On the front and rear differential, there's a hole in the side. And that's where you'll put your pin in for your, for your out drive. I'll just kind of just try to line it up the best I can. And once you sit it in there, it's not going to like fall down in there if you got grease on it. The grease will kind of hold it in place. And you just want to grab some tweezers and uh, kind of line it up and just slide it into place. I use the tweezers to kind of move some of the grease around to make sure it's nice and covered. And the uh, big step you don't want to forget because it will make a mess. Trust me, I know from experience. Um, you want to grab your little you want to grab your little retaining nut go ahead and thread it into that hole you don't want to go crazy and run it in all the way I just like to go until it's flush and I can't feel it snag my finger because you don't want it like poking out on the inside to where it could possibly get into your gear all right. And then you want to take whatever grease you're going to be using or whatever oil you're going to be using. All right. In this case, I'm going to be, this is the rear, so I'm using 3000. And I just kind of fill in the voids in the gear, try to push the air out of them. Because in my theory, if you flip, if you put the gear in there and you pour grease around it, there's going to be air trapped behind the gear. Um, but I don't think a little bit of air is going to hurt anyway. And just flip it down. Bam. Grab your pin. Grab a gear. And these little washers, you can feel a rough edge to those. You can sand them if you want to, but it is a major pain. What I always try to do is I always try to put the smooth side towards the case or, you know, the diff housing. 
So you can kind of feel it. So there we go. Ooh. These things are so fiddly. All right. Grab another one. Smooth side right there. Then just take it, drop it in place, kind of hold your finger, and you can spin it and you can face the little notch up because there's like a little notch in it. You got to kind of key them together. Same thing, smooth side towards the out, towards the, the diff casing. Then once you get them in there, you kind of hold it down with your finger. Make sure it's turning freely. In our case it is, that's a great thing. Then you take your oil and I kind of like to put it behind the gear. Just trying to chase all the air out of it the best you can. Just kind of go around the edge and let it run down the diff case. Once you get it to the top almost full, take your gear and always try to line the, the pin up. You can either line it up with the screw holes or just in between the screw holes, whichever you prefer, just so you can reference it with the, uh, the pin so it makes it easier. So we'll go for the screw hole and you can kind of turn it, kind of key it in place. And go around and fill the differential. Make sure you get all the fluid in there. <laughs> Alright, set that off to the side. Let the air escape. Uh, another good thing about having this glass right here. It kind of gives you a place to uh, to sit the the out drives actually stand up on it very nicely. But if you don't have that, you know you can put it on your stand. All right. So what I like to do I just take a razor blade and just take it across the top and scratch it and get any excess off. And you can kind of see if there's any that's, you know, you might have like some air or something like that. Then you can take your, your pin, line it up, and just drop it into place. Be very, very gently. Make sure it's lining up. But then you just take your take your screws. Always like to start them with just a regular driver. Um, just so I can make sure they're actually going in straight. Once you get a few turns in there and you know they're going in correctly, I'll take electric 
electric screwdriver of your choice. And I don't run them all the way tight, I just kind of run them down to save your, your arm. Because running these in with a regular driver is pretty painful. So once you get them pretty much ran down flat, I'll just take a regular driver, snug them up, make sure you cross around, then go to your next one over here, just the X pattern, which I'm sure we're all familiar with. And I always like to add pressure to the different, you know, the, the whole thing. I try to squeeze it together if I can. But if you're not familiar with the X pattern, you'll tighten this one, then tighten this one, then tighten this one, then tighten that one. It's just to kind of reassure that it's actually actually going down and snugging up, good. And then you can try out your differential, make sure everything's smooth. Everything feels amazing. Then you can kind of just take a towel. Get your finger in there, wipe off all the extra grease, and boom, just like that. All right, guys, that's pretty much it. That's how I build my differentials. It's pretty straightforward. Um, this will translate into any eight scale. Um, a lot of RC cars, you can use this same technique um, building your differentials. But yeah. That's pretty much it. Like always, guys, I appreciate you for watching. Uh, make sure you like, share, subscribe, and all that good stuff. And uh, we'll see you on the next one. Let's see if I can juggle these things. Nope. <laughs>